Now there's a lot to unpack for this video. First off, finding and buying a GPU, little tricky. Still, it's not, not a great situation. ASRock has got a container ship of 6700 XTs or so they tell me that are inbound. So look for those. Micro Center has had a pretty good run in terms of making GPUs available. Sometimes you could do the new egg lottery, although you don't really have a great chance of winning that from what I can tell. Not a great situation, but drivers and updates and ray tracing. Team Red working on ray tracing in this brand new AAA Resident Evil game. I mean, it's Resident Evil, I don't know. Gameplay, not really here to talk about gameplay and the stuff that goes with the gameplay aspect of it, but some of the game technology that powers the gameplay experience, you have to talk about the gameplay experience at least a little bit because that's what makes it go. First off, the 6700 XT, if we're not talking about ray tracing or variable ray shading or anything like that, for the performance out of the box, very impressive at 1440p. And I would even say it's playable at 4K if you're willing to you know, not run everything at the absolute maximum. And the visual fidelity and the visual experience is very, very good. If you want a higher frame rate, a, you know, a higher frame rate sort of experience, you can get that, but variable rate shading will probably enter the equation. VRS at 4K, I can't tell the difference unless I really zoom in and pixel peep those images. 1440p, it's a little bit more noticeable, but again, unless I'm pixel peeping and really paying attention, I think it works fine. 1080p, 1080p is a completely different story. I would not recommend variable rate shading to be on at 1080p. Uh, this is also in terms of like gameplay and like gameplay experience. I was kind of shocked. The HDR experience on this game with the BenQ monitor on my setup here was kind of surprising. I mean, the, the BenQ HDR experience overall is, you know, middle of the road, upper middle of the road for this particular 4K monitor. It is an older 4K monitor, so, you know, you got to take that into consideration. But this is the first game that I've really looked at where you can tell a big difference in visual fidelity with HDR enabled. It actually looks a lot better with HDR en enabled. And I sort of get the, uh, the noir aesthetic that Capcom was going for with this particular game with HDR enabled. So that was not something that I expected for this review. Now you might have remembered the caveat that I just said about having ray tracing turned off, but actually this game with ray tracing turned on is a pretty good experience. Even with the 6700 XT running this thing at, you know, 60 plus, well, 60 to 90 FPS in the 2560 by 1440p range. And certainly it could do it with the 3440 by 1440p super wide screen resolution thing, sort of awesome. There's a couple things about the game itself that makes testing this a little problematic. One, if you all tab into Windows, HDR is turned off permanently. That seems like a game thing. And two, the resolution slider controls, uh, it takes effect immediately. So when you're changing resolutions, it takes about three seconds for this monitor to change resolution. So when you click a thing, it's like blackness, wait, 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 wait. Oh, and it changed. And it cycles through lots of really absurd resolutions for this monitor. It's a 16 by nine monitor, 2048 by 1536. Does this make any sense? No, I don't think it does. That's just a UI problem with this game. Something that Capcom should put a little bit more work into. Maybe it wasn't intended for this format. I don't know, but I feel like that they should put a little bit of work into the UI there, but that's not an AMD thing. That's not a driver thing. That's not a game thing. That's just Capcom needing to work on the polish and user experience a little bit. And I had a couple of weird issues that I think were down to changing the resolution and the options, looking for the right, you know, combination of performance and visual fidelity that, you know, made it seem like not as good of an experience as it could have been just because the UI and stuff was not as polished as maybe it should be. So in addition to the variable rate shading that I was talking about before, which I do think really helps, especially around 1440p and being able to push some of those higher resolutions with a little bit less GPU horsepower. I mean, you can turn it on for free performance at 4K, basically. There's several other Fidelity FX technologies that are also rolled into this title that are aimed at improving the gameplay experience. You know, one of them is a contrast aware sharpening, and this is meant to enhance detail in areas of the game where there's not as much contrast. And this is something that, you know, I've sort of messing around with on in terms of HDR on and HDR off, just to see how it react. In some configurations, I'm not sure that that's my cup of tea, but I could definitely see how having that capability 
in the game, depending on what your monitor's capabilities are and what sort of visual experience you want from playing a game like this, uh, those features would be really important to you. And so they're there, they work, work, they work really well, and they help performance, or at the very least they don't hinder performance when we're talking about the, the suite of Fidelity FX capabilities in these cards. Another really cool thing that's in this is the texture resolution. Uh, yes, you can run this in PS1 mode, and e even in PS1 mode, it's using kind of a lot of texture memory. If I were going to run this on, say, you know, like, you remember the, the Vega Nano? No. No. Four gigs? No. Not, not enough. 12 gigs, 6700 XT, it does make a difference. It's clocking in at like 10 point something gigabytes according to the menu. And yeah, it looks pretty good. It is using the texture memory. Again, that's, you know, AMD and Capcom working together and having more VRAM in this title seems pretty good from, from my perspective. Just for the sake of completeness, we also tested on a 6800 XT. And when we're talking about ray tracing and the higher end features, yeah, the 6800 XT is even more mind blowing. Again, HDR. It's gonna clear 60 FPS. So this particular monitor is 4K 60. That's what it tops out at. It is free sync. So I can go a little bit beyond 60 with some finagling. But uh, the 6800 XT is what I would want if I were pushing like that 90 FPS 4K gaming experience in Resident Evil 8. Uh, you might be wondering about VR. <laughs> Do you want to experience Resident Evil in VR? Who, who hurt you? What are you doing to yourself? Why would you do that to yourself? Resident, that's the, the jump scares and the dragging of the thing off from the... Uh, why, would you, why would you do that? So the big takeaways here are, if you're a Resident Evil fan, Resident Evil 8, go! Just... Resident Evil 8, that's a thing. That's, now that that's out of the way, the other takeaway is performance. The AMD driver and software team have a pretty big win here, I think, in terms of at least a demonstration for how well their stuff can work if properly implemented. They've put a lot in here. This is FreeSync Pro. FreeSync Pro is a is a thing, and it's it's available in this title, and it works really well. Uh, the 6700 XT with some of the the settings at the highest end, especially when running at 4K, especially if I'm messing around with ray tracing. Yeah, it you know it needs a little bit of a variability in terms of what I'm asking it to do if I'm going to deliver that smooth experience, and those things are built into this engine, and those aspects of the game seem to work pretty well overall, especially with a 6700 XT. I mean, you gotta you gotta keep in mind I'm not throwing a 6900 XT at this. It's a 6700 XT and 4K. This performance is really good. If only you could you know buy the GPU at MSRP, it would be that much more impressive. Eh, we're working on it. Resident Evil 8 being a showpiece for uh, AMD's technology and the ASRock Phantom Gaming 6700 XT being the chariot on which we ride to get there. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out, and I'll see you later.